Hi, my name is Ron Wills, and I'm president of CEO Focus in the Maryland, D.C., and Virginia area. I'm going to share with you a video today from one of our mastermind groups. It showcases the really the brilliant work of Atlantic Online, one of our members, in systemization and operation optimization. That's a mouthful, but this is good stuff. So take a look. Uh, this video will introduce you to Ed Finneran, the CEO of Atlantic Online, and Ari Reebok, Director of Network e Engineering. So enjoy. Ed, I'm going to turn it over to you. Maybe you could do the introduction of Ari and um, what you plan to talk about today. Absolutely. Thank, thanks, everyone, for being here. Um, thanks for the feedback, Ron. Um, so we were asked to do a presentation on systemization. Um, just real quick, um, Atlantic Online, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is a fiber uh, telephone and data center provider. We've been in business now for, um, this is our 27th year in business. And we have some serious competition uh, that we compete against every day uh, to win customers like these away from them. Um, so we work very hard to do that. And for you know the first 25 years, our systemization to, to make sure these processes were happening, um, to get all the services installed and, and customers care for was very much ticket based, uh, a trouble ticketing system. We took them, uh, we created tickets from our CRM system that we use for billing customers. Um, and, and so there were tickets and, and with multiple departments in a company, it was very difficult. It was very linear oriented. When somebody worked on a ticket, they moved it to another department, that department completed, they moved it back. And there was no holistic picture on where we were in processes. And so after 25 years um, and at the pace we're growing, we needed to have a better project management solution. Uh, and so we went through a process uh, to determine uh, the best project management system for us. Uh, we looked at all the ones that everyone here is familiar with. And, and it came down to a key point of why we chose Reich is that we were able to manage tickets, um, not tickets, but projects across multiple departments. All the competitors except Reich weren't very good at managing across departments um, in the way that we needed to. Um, so we chose Reich and started building it out. And we've had tremendous um, success with this. And today I have uh, our director of network engineering with us, Ari Reba. Um, and I'm very excited for his presentation today. So Ari, take it away. You might be on mute, Ari, I can't hear you. We'll try again, the old double mute. So good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak to you and I'm happy to be with a group of Excel fans and pivot table experts. I think some of my presentation may build on what Dillis and others have talked about. As Ed mentioned, Atlantic Online has been on this journey of systemization since August. I was uh, through happenstance joined the company around the same time. And I was excited to kind of dive in head first into this process. I've over my 20 years in IT been exposed to many different frameworks, whether it's ITIL, PMP, Agile, or, or safe methodologies. And as Ed mentioned, I felt Reich gave us a really um, versatile platform to take up all of our processes, not only business goals, but operational goals and see across um, the organization uh, and, and really bring visibility, collaboration, increased communication, tracking metrics and all of that into one house. So I've ordered uh, our presentation around kind of three steps, our planning stage, as well as some uh, specific examples and screenshots from Reich. And then we're going to end with some uh, lessons learned at the end of the presentation. At any point in time, uh, if you have a question, please feel free to, to reach out uh, and, and just give a holler. So 
as I mentioned, you know, we really wanted to look at systemization so that we could view and examine our processes to make the improvements that we needed across the entire organization. I, I'm a fan of philosophy and of quotes, and so I picked out a good one uh, around systemization, and it comes from Socrates, that the unexamined life is not worth living. I would say the corollary in the business world is that an unexamined process is not sustainable. And coming off of the ward of scalability and talking about that, you know, I think it's important to really navel gaze in an organization around whether our processes are working for us as well as our customers. Starting out new with Atlantic, I, I took several steps um, to not only understand our business, our architecture, but also our customers, our employees, and our tools. So I've outlined on this uh, slide, this is a little dense and I apologize for that, some of the initial steps that I took. I wanna highlight that my first step and, and probably the most critical was partnering with Ed to discuss our short-term business needs as well as our long-term strategic goals. I used that discussion to frame my understanding and the discussions I then had with my peers, the other directors in the organization, as well as my direct management team in engineering and their direct reports. I spoke to each one of these individually because even in this day and age of Zoom and Teams and everything like that, it's still best to get one-on-one -on -one with people, understand their passions, their pains, and how this uh, aligns with the needs of the business and the, and the goals. I pulled out several themes from those discussions. It took me about a month to, to go through this process, but really what I wanted to do was understand the, the value stream, i.e. the steps that our product and our service goes through from inception and, and lead generation all the way to the customer receiving value. And I tracked those steps understood the themes and kind of pulled together some high level ideas of initial targets that I felt we could prioritize in our systemization process. And I, I, I'll go through some of my reasoning. I have a slide coming up that kind of details it. But really what I was looking to first was to find some initial wins, some initial processes that I could tweak, tweak quickly to get immediate time savings. I could then leverage that time savings in kind of a temporal Rob Peter to pay Paul to invest more and more in the right platform and work on more and more processes throughout the organization. When I had what I felt was a, a good thematic approach that matched the business needs and our strategic goals, I put together a presentation similar to, to this and laid out for both the executive team and the engineering teams directly the, the feedback I received from the one-on-one -on -one discussions, my thoughts and interpretations on that feedback, as well as my proposed next steps. I gave the team time to review view, discuss internally, and follow that up with an anonymous survey form that it actually included our internal NPS rating. Uh, I know we brought that up before to gauge what people's feedback was unfiltered and then roll that back into my plan. And, and this is gonna be a, a recurrent theme in my presentation that when you look at systemization and you look at processes, you have to continue to repeat, improve, engage, repeat, Eat and improve. Uh, I think, Matt, you, you know, some of your discussion around marketing touched on those points that you have to continue to invest in these processes and not fall back. Uh, and I think that's was important for me to realize early and important for my team to realize that our initial starting point was by no means the end of the road, that this was very much a journey and not a, a destination, right? I actually use some of the phrases, I think Becky, you mentioned crawl, walk, run, something that I think my, my engineering team is probably tired of hearing me say, but it, it's very valuable and a good way of getting the point across that this is not a one-time activity. It's something that we have to continue to do and continue to go through. And then this last bullet point is once again, specific to the partnership between Ed and I, the you know engineering mentality sometimes gets into analysis paralysis. So it's good to have an accountability buddy to help you balance the work and the analysis that you're doing with actual execution. And so uh, I wanted to call that out as one of the key steps and, and key parts of our, our planning to plan. 
as mentioned, um, I wanted to look for a couple of quick wins to help you know, gain that snowball effect. And so I took a quantitative analysis of where my engineering team was spending time and effort and tried to map that against where the company actually received benefit and value. And so once again, there's a great spreadsheet to list behind uh, that fabulous donut chart. Uh, but I looked at the various areas of our processes, looked at the time the engineers and the managers were reporting they were spending on them and said, okay, you know, uh, one call out that we had was around incident management. And I said, this is a quick place that we can look and drill down into the process, make improvements so that engineers are spending less time fixing issues and more time improving the overall stability of the system, something that I think adds more direct value to the business and the customers. Another area that I wanted to focus on was our time to market. Once again, these were processes that span multiple teams, required excessive coordination, and failures of these would be quite apparent and visible to the customer and caused a lot of friction within the internal organization. As mentioned, with those two items in hand, I took a, a very life cycle focused approach where I looked at our strategy, put together a design, helped transition that design through training, implementation, rollouts, and get everybody not only within the engineering department, but other departments that we partnered with, whether it was the upstream team dealing with sales and marketing or provisioning or installs for us, that's very specific to, to our vertical, but also people downstream like our technical support teams that had to deal with any issues that came up from implementations. And then once again, looping that all together with continual service improvement to observe the changes being made in the processes and the implementation of these systems, think about the expectations of what we expected and see if during the implementation and, and afterwards we're getting the expected result. Um, from here, you know, this seems like a lot and, and kind of that journey. I did want to kind of mention that in a lot of these instances, when looking at systems or processes, there's a lot of great uh, existing frameworks that people can rely on, no matter your, your vertical, your industry. I am particularly a fan of uh, ITIL, which is an international standard around service deployment and service management. Uh, but there's other uh, frameworks and guides um, that any of your industries probably have available through US or international standards. Many platforms also have integrated templates. We use, for example, Lucid Charts for diagramming. Uh, they have a great template library that we draw upon. And Rike itself um, has a template gallery uh, that we leverage to quickly roll out examples and use them as a foundation to build upon. As I mentioned, one of the keys was to balance planning with actual execution. Uh, I thought of a, a great quote from Lewis Carroll that if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. And so just start anywhere. Don't let perfection be the enemy of good enough and iterate as quickly as possible. I'm not sure uh, if people have heard the quote from uh, Facebook about failing fast, but that has to do with the iteration mentality that as quickly as you can get results back and feed that back into your process to improvement, the better off you'll be over the entire lifespan of that project. I'll pause to see if there's any questions before going into specific examples from our deployment of Reich. Rather than a question, I want to compliment you on your sort of the scope of your thinking yeah here here very you, impressive it, it fantastic could not be better ari you really did a, a an amazing job i mean it, it's for the customer right i mean from from lead generation to them actually getting whether it's our fiber service or telephony i think people you know it it's abstracted how many different departments and how many different people play a critical role in getting that process done smoothly, efficiently, and, and to exceed the expectations of the customer. So I, I, I would like to take the compliment and, and I, I really do, but it, 
it's inherent that you take that system approach and step back as the business owner, as the, the heads of the departments to see their pains and work with them directly. Fantastic. Um, Ed mentioned project management. Uh, I pulled this quote from uh, Reich's uh, website because I thought it was fantastic and got to the point. Reich builds themselves not as project management, but as work management software. You can include anything in there from business goals to operational uh, procedures, recurrent tasks, uh, even tickets. We didn't do the, the ticket generation because we have a powerful ticket system, but you can get a lot of data from a lot of different departments and their specific processes under the umbrella of Reich. And when you do that, you open up the possibility of cutting across the horizontals or digging deep into the verticals to expose information, either in dashboards or pivot tables like uh, Dilla showed or through other methodologies. I grabbed some screenshots from our Reich implementation that I hope will uh, bring out some of these discussions. Um, I've worked with over the years, Excel and Microsoft Project, as well as Atlassian projects, uh, products like Jira. And I've really found over the last several months with Atlantic Online that Reich has done the best job of covering uh, work styles like a waterfall, uh, waterfall style project, as well as uh, more flexible, agile style methodologies and be able to combine them sometimes within the existing process or project to meet engineers where they are, how they like to work and empower them, which is just incredible. Um, Matt, once again, I, I think you talked about, you know, you're a lover of process, but not necessarily for yourself. Being able to meet engineers in different departments where they are in their style of talking and work structure, but keep it within the same platform, I think is one of the, the hugely understated benefits of Reich. Um, to start off, like I said, because looking at the macro level, it may seem difficult to figure out where to start. Reich has a built-in template system uh, and examples that you can use to quickly uh, implement things like uh, OKRs or, or meetings or projects or market planning or anything like that that you see on this screenshot broken down by verticals and silos. Some of the lessons that we learned, uh, and I, I put it on this side, is if you can always set your visibility to public. This doesn't mean allow everybody to edit everything, but it means allow people to see and engage whether through comments or, or, or things like that. Uh, if you're familiar with IT systems, we often call it role-based access controls or, or AAA. Uh, but the idea is to basically allow people to work together. There's no reason why if I come after, if engineering, not me specifically, but if engineering comes after installs and provisioning that we shouldn't be able to see their work to make sure we know when we need to trigger our events and they shouldn't be able to see our work to know that things are being transitioned smoothly. Within Atlantic Online, we built out spaces for individual project uh, departments, teams, as well as cross-functional projects. And Reich supports doing that so that you can have a space for engineering, a space for cross-business goals, uh, and, and strategies and long-term things. And I, I think that's um, very powerful as well. I'm gonna dig into some nuances of Reich um, with some of these screenshots. The first that I wanted to highlight was the capability of integrating email and a specific folder with your Reich space. So Reich has a generic email address, reich at reich.com that you can map to any space and any folder. And so I have one called email tasks. So when I get my, my daily question from Ed, I can track all of those and make sure I'm executing and, and getting those items answered and to the right people. So I have a quick email address, an Outlook contact associated with it. I just forward the email, it creates a task and I have a dashboard that tracks all of those so I can assign them out, make sure that I'm closing out the items and getting Ed uh, the information he needs. So if you deal with a lot of email and are trying to make sure you stay on track of it, Reich has an answer for that. Moving out the scope a little bit to um, bigger items outside of individual uh, tasks, 
Reich has the ability to create folders within a space. Uh, and let me get my uh, little pointer here. Hopefully people can see it. Um, the names of the folder on the left-hand side are the exact names of the ITIL processes and structures I was looking to emphasize with my team. So I mapped one-to-one -one folders, project names with the exact processes and systems that we were working on so there was no confusion. One of the hidden powers of uh, Reich is that we can actually associate a single task or a single project with multiple folders. In this way, Reich treats folders kind of like tags. And if you're wondering how this may be helpful, uh, I'll try and put it in various different terms and use cases that I've used within Reich. You can use a folder to have kind of the process flow or the department flow but also have them tracked by customer. So if you have a salesperson that's interested in seeing all the activity with the customer, you can have a folder specific to each customer and tag in the projects or tasks associated with them. You could do items like uh, escalations or incidents that are in SLA versus out of SLA. And that provides you a method of viewing data and cutting it up into areas that are meaningful for you, your team or whatever persona uh, you're kind of uh, operating within. Next up, uh, looking at task management, and let me see if I can get this uh, drawing off here. There we go. Um, I wanted to show an example of one such dashboard. Here we've gotten tasks uh, specific to a specific engineer's job description. This screenshot shows the network engineer one dashboard where we're pulling tickets from our escalation and incident management queue, as well as operational tasks, projects, and areas of improvement that we're working on. And this view is specific to this job role, but the data is also shared amongst other job roles. My managers also have the same view of escalations to make sure that they're staying on top of the customer values. And so what I, the way I try and build out the dashboards is so the engineers or the managers can work from uh, left to right and top to bottom to always know their priorities and the order to action in. Top left is escalations, things that we have to deal with immediately to get the customer uh, working again. We move over to support, operations, projects, and improvements. And so as they tick through the boxes and get work done in each of those pillars, they can move to the next one and add more and more value. One of the other items that we're using within Reich was its uh, recently released feature around automating workflows. They have introduced APIs and an automation engine that allows you to look at triggers, which could either be time or status base and perform specific action. So a lot of the triggers and automation that I've been using within Reich have been to add folders, i.e. tags to projects um, so that if uh, escalation hasn't been responded to in three days or hasn't been closed out, the manager and the engineer gets a reminder all through Reich, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to check in the morning. The system does it automatically for me. It can also close out projects that have all the tasks complete or warn of ones that are getting into uh, in jeopardy or at risk areas. Speaking on project management, if you do love to dig into the numbers and get pretty charts and graphs, Reich uh, provides an analytics view similar to their Gantt view or their Agile Kanban board view that shows um, performance, work progress, and if you're familiar with the terms uh, burn down or velocity charts, Reich is able to automatically deliver those as a separate tab so I can view as a lover of data and numbers the analytics tab while my engineers can look at a list view or a table view of their tasks depending on their uh, preference. This is also good when speaking to the other directors and the executive teams to show progress, completion, expectations, velocity, and areas like that. 
within the projects. As a director, I have a lot of projects. I think I have over 20 right now across my different teams. And so one of the things that's important is to be able to communicate the overall state of the portfolio. So Reich is able to build reports that cut across each of the projects and show key data points, key columns, key custom fields, so that every Monday when we uh, review status, uh, with the other team members and with the executive team, I can quickly go over our top priority projects, show uh, progress against completion, show status, and the latest notes. And so what we do is we go through a process of making sure each of the projects are updated with status. And so we can do readouts very quickly, um, either in a meeting or because of the public visibility, if anybody has an interest and wants to track this project, or a group of projects, they can quickly and easily see a report that's always up to date uh, based on our status. Reich has done some recent improvements to automatically compute progress and health of a project. And you can see that in uh, the middle right column there. Finally, and, and getting a little bit more into the systemization, Reich offers the ability to build out blueprints per spaces or per teams so that you can template a recurring process and then run improvements through it. So um, for change management, we have a five phase approach to uh, reviewing a proposed architectural change, planning for it, implementing it, monitoring it, and then closing out a change. And what we did was, you know, we took our first stab at the blueprint Surprise, surprise, it wasn't right. I took feedback from the engineering team after we ran a couple of changes through the process and we improved it. And each time we roll out the blueprint, it gets better and better and better because we're putting time and effort into maintaining the blueprint itself, adding more information to each one of the tasks, updating the order, taking out items, adding in items. And one of the lessons learned that I'll go through is also adding uh, different levels of complexity for, for different items because some processes do not fit a one size fit, fits all methodology. So having a blueprint, uh, Reich's term for a blueprint uh, in place allows you to continue to improve and invest in an individual process so that when team members need to execute that process, they get the latest and greatest view of it automatically with assignments, dates, uh, recommended durations, uh, task details, everything like that. I talked a little bit about incident management. So here's one of the uh, crazy uh, fancy diagrams that we did to kind of uh, wireframe the process end to end. And the way that Reich fit into this was uh, we had a process that relied on email. And so for our specific folder within Reich around incident management, we are actually able to get a unique email address from Reich that allows us to add in to the email chain that folder's ID as a CC or a BCC, and it automatically creates tickets for us. So we were able to meet an existing process where it was and quickly add in Reich uh, to track that process and provide metrics. And that comes through Reich's uh, ability to have a folder email ID uh, that allows you to email into that folder automatically. And within tasks, you get the same email ID and it adds uh, details or additional comments to that task. Very powerful feature, I use it every day. And once again, uh, what I did uh, as kind of a cheat code was I created Outlook contacts for key folders that I use. So I just type in the name, forward it over, and within a minute, the task is created. And through automation, new tasks get picked up when they're created and assigned out to the appropriate team. Going through just uh, two more items, lifecycle management. As mentioned, a lot of tasks and operations are recurrent. They happen on a regular cadence, whether that's daily, weekly, monthly, or maybe even annually. Reich has the ability to create tasks and track that recurrence and automatically create new ones. Um, so the screenshot here shows uh, our weekly review 
of vulnerabilities across both the network and voice engineering teams. These tasks are automatically created for us on Monday morning. We don't have to think about it. And as we review and improve processes, we can add more recurrent tasks to remind us of renewals, uh, key quarterly reporting events, um, items that help us uh, improve the stability of our service overall. Training, uh, this is a lot, as you can tell uh, from the fact that I've been uh, going on for about 20 minutes now, uh, is critically important. We leverage the blueprint process within Rike to set up a training curriculum and then be able to roll that out to each of the engineers and each of the managers specific for their job role. So like a process, we, create, uh, we think of training in the same way. The improvement of ourselves and our careers and our knowledge um, is something that we want to invest in and continue to invest in. And so we leveraged uh, blueprints not only to train people on Reich itself, but then to build out career training and get that assigned to them, uh, the individual engineers, to track their progress against those goals. And then finally, as mentioned, um, continuous service improvement. One of our Reich blueprints is around the blameless postmortem or lessons learned process. We do that after major incidents or major operational uh, concerns. And we build out that process right in Reich so we can track the findings, track the exercise, and report up our overall improvement of the end-to-end -end process. I'll pause before going into the lessons learned, see if there's any questions, and then I'll touch on successes and failures. Okay, uh, if not, um, one of the keys to our success was having evangelists within each organization, people that were passionate about process and organization and efficiency and improvement. Um, the teams that had that evangelist were able to quickly pick up Reich, quickly transition their existing processes to Reich, quickly improve those processes and start to show value to the customers as well as the internal staff. As mentioned, I highly recommend erring on the side of visibility. Um, get everyone involved in that process. It shouldn't just be a director level initiative. It should be something that everybody throughout all the, the layers of the organization uh, get involved with. And then finally, uh, continually improve and track. Some of the failures, um, it's kind of a tautology, but time does take time. Um, so Going through the initial stages of our planning took about a month, and we're now four months into uh, implementing Reich in different processes, looking, like I said, at ones that improved our time to market, uh, as well as improved uh, stability and reduced time um, between coordination of projects. With all of this, uh, we sometimes found that a blank canvas can be an artist nemesis. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, coming into Reich, it's bare. You have to build out the structure. You have to build out the templates. You have to build out all of this stuff. Um, I highly recommend, like I said, looking for examples online, looking for examples within their own uh, template library or their community uh, to help you start somewhere and iterate through to improvement. I mentioned in, in change management that one of the mistakes I personally made was uh, creating a, a standard change management process that was one size fits all. We actually ended up needing to make a change management process for expedited changes, things that we had to do in an emergency, as well as uh, changes that happen in a standard time frame or as an extended project. So when, when possible, be flexible, be like the tree, bend, don't break, uh, have a process, but have flavors of it to, to fit the right mold. Um, once again, uh, not everybody's going to be passionate about systemization. Not anybody can be as OCD as I am or, or love Excel or, or wake up just getting excited about a pivot table. Uh, keep that in mind, meet people where they are and help them on the journey. One of the things that people found most helpful in the journey was having office hours, just an open time that they could come in and ask me or some of the other evangelists questions about Reich, the processes, best practices, things like that. And with that, thank you so much. Uh, if there's any final questions, happy to answer any or all of them. Uh, Ari, what, uh, what version of Reich are you using? Is it the enterprise version? 
it is the enterprise base plan. Okay. Because uh, some of the features you were talking about are not available in the Reich service that I'm using. So I'm, I'm really impressed with the additional things that you get with the enterprise version. When I looked at the, the feature comparison between the, the additions, I think enterprise is really a sweet spot probably for most businesses. Um, if you're looking at Reich across the organization. I think if you're using Reich only within one department or within a single process, you may be able to use one of the, 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 the cheaper or, or lower end. I don't wanna say lower end, that, that sounds negative, but use a different edition than enterprise. But I think for Atlantic Online to go across all of our verticals, enterprise was really uh, the yeah. one that made the most sense. Ab absolutely, the, com you know, the, ab the abilities that the enterprise version have are really significant. You know, for some small companies, just to get started with the basic version, you can do amazing things and, and you know, really achieve many of your goals. And as you build, you can always go up to the higher level versions. Absolutely. And, and like I said, it was probably about two months into the, the process that I realized the power of the folders as a label as opposed to a single concept. I approached folders initially like your desktop operating system. A task or a project could only be in one. And then when I started to see that you could add additional folders without it disrupting the organization yeah. and that could lend itself to different views, a view for the executive team, a view for the director levels, a view for people in specific job roles, that unlocked a lot for me in my thinking and my approach to systemization uh, within Atlantic Online. Terrific. Thank you very, very much. This was awesome. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ari. Excellent presentation.